All right, here we go. My name is Ryan Drish, and I'm here to talk to you guys about a little instructional thing that you can implement in your classroom called Pass the Word. So what is Pass the Word? Pass the Word is an activity that you can play in your classroom that is actually promotes face-to-face -face communication, stimulates the power, the processing power of the brain, and is an excellent strategy to support test-taking skills. What it is, it's an interactive game that can be played with your students that enhances their memory and their cognitive functions. So what do you need? Before we start to get in the directions, what do we need to start the game? First of all, this game takes around 10 to 15 minutes of playtime, so it's always good to schedule that out. And it is recommended that you use a soft, pliable ball. I actually have a ball right here, which is the same ball in the picture, which is really weird. Um, but a ball like this would work a lot better. It looks like a soft ball, but it's really squishy. Really, you just need a ball or any item that you can throw around your classroom that won't break anything or potentially hurt anyone. So how do you play? So this is how the game works. There's a bunch of different versions, but for, we're gonna start with the main version. The main version of the activity has starts with the students sitting in a circle. As you see, I have little students in a circle. The teacher will pick a category that has to do with the content area of the class. For example, if you were in a history class, you could play with presidents. Or example, in a math class, I have graphing, or you could use functions, or equations, or algebra, or geography. There's so many different categories that you could use. The students will get two to three minutes to brainstorm about three to four words that go along with that category. For example, I have, if I picked graphs, you could do slope, or you could do intercept, or you could do plane. There's a bunch of different words, but it's just uh, two to three minutes to let the kids brainstorm different ideas that will go along. At the start of the game, the teacher will announce to class that the game has begun. A student will get a ball that the teacher gives, and they will shout out their word loud and clear. So basically when the game starts, the teacher gives the kid a ball and they will say their word. So like if I went first, I would say slope. After I say my word, I pass the ball to the person either to my left or to the right. And since we're in a circle, the ball will just make its way all the way around the circle. So when I pass the ball to my friend, they will then say their word. For example, function or equation, anything that has to do with the graph. Once the ball is in motion, each student is required to shout out their word once the ball is received. Students are not allowed to repeat a word if their word has already been said. So it's kind of like a thinking stimulating game where you're required to come up with a lot of words as fast as possible and you don't want to stutter and you don't want to repeat. But if you can't come up with a word, it's okay because students are allowed to receive help from their fellow students, but only on the right or the left. So if I had a friend over here on my left, and I didn't know a word, I could lean over to him and ask him if he had a word for me, that he could give me a word, that would be okay. So how does the game end? The game ends when the ball makes its way all the way around the circle back to the initial kid. So that's when everyone has said at least one word. The teacher will be stop watching this whole game and they will let the, let the kids know how fast they were able to get the ball from point A all the way around the circle and back to point A. And so this kind of gives the kids an incentive to go as fast as they can to see if, you know, maybe we can play a second or a third time and we want to get the highest score possible or we want to go the fastest possible without messing up. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about why you should implement this. Like, yeah, it's a fun game. You know, you got a ball and you can throw it around and who doesn't like playing with balls, but why is it important? Why should we implement it? One of, uh, I have a whole list here of things that it um, actually does that really helps kids out in the classroom. But the first thing it does is it increases fluent thinking it develops listening skills, and it strengthens focused attention. And this is a lot of just key things that students need um, at any level. But as a secondary class, it's really nice, especially for math. You know, you need to be able to think fluently and creatively and critically, or just anybody can work on their listening skills. Um, one of the fourth one right here says improved test taking skills, and that's a big one. Um, and that helps them improve test taking skills because it's kind of like a recall. You know, they're forced to recall different words, different ideas, different concepts. And even if they can't come up with other words, they can listen to the words of others. And the last one is it promotes cooperation because it's a cooperative game. You know, the goal is not um, to only do your word, but the goal is to get the ball around the circle as fast as possible. So if your friend is having trouble, you can help him or her out. Um, and like I said, there, that was just a classical version. You know, you start at the beginning, you go all the way around and you time it to see how fast you can go. But there's all sorts of variations. Excuse me, I only included three here. Um, but the first one's called competitive. Um, and it's pretty cool. So what you do, um, you would put a student in the middle of the circle and you start the ball just like normal. You give a kid on the outside of the circle the ball. 
but instead of the kid holding the ball saying a word, the kid in the middle has to say a word. And then after he says their word, you pass the ball to the left or to the right, depending on what direction you pick. And then the kid in the middle has to say another word. And basically the ball acts as a stopwatch moving around the circle and the time stops when the ball gets back to the middle. So this is a little different because it is based on single student performance. Um, so this would not work very well if you had kids that were nervous or shy because it really points them out in the middle of the classroom. But it is a great example of how to get kids focused on uh, just seeing how many words they can do. If you have a large classroom, it might not be how fast they can do it, but whether or not they can even get around the circle, because that's a lot of words. Uh, the second one here I have is called elimination. Um, this one's actually a one that I made up. It wasn't on our thing, but I think it would be a cool implementation of this game. Uh, how it would work is you start, you give a kid a ball, just like normal, they pass it to the left or to the right. But in this iteration, if you repeat a word, or if you forget a word, or if you don't answer it fast enough, you are out from the game. And then so you will scoot back and the circle will get smaller and you keep playing. And this will just continue, continue, continue until there are no words and there's only one man standing. And this is good because it just basically squeezes out all the information possible. Um, now it is more competitive. I know that that's not really a lot of people's favorite kind of game, but if you have a, some competitive kids in your classroom, this is a great idea to implement. And the last one I have is paired association. So how this one works is it's more of like you give the kid a ball and it could be anything in math. So this is really good for unit reviews because it might not just be over slopes, it could just be over um, any unit in general. Um, and so that someone could start by saying slopes and then they say, let's say equation, and then the next person says algebra, and the next person says variable, and they just go back and forth to see how many um, algebra words they can do. And you can use that for elimination, you can use that for competitive, or you can use that for the classical version. So when should you implement this? Like, is this a game you want to play every day? Is this a every other day, once a month, uh, end of the school year? This is what I have read. Pass the word is the best used to review before a test. Why? Because it improves recall of memory, utilizes fluent thinking, and builds on prior knowledge. This is a great thing to use before tests because this is right before kids are needing the information the most. And so if you play a game that helps them recall, listen and focus and just practice their critical thinking, it can really help them in the long run, especially for tests because it's great review. And that is all I have today. So I hope you learned something for Pass the Word and that you consider using it in your future classroom. Thank you.